Today on the Locked On Blues podcast, we are back from a short hiatus last week. We got lots to cover, including Jordan Kyrou's breakout performance of the All-Star Game in the fastest skater competition and the game itself, where he almost napped himself All-Star MVP, talking about his potential role as the face of the franchise for the St. Louis Blues moving forward, all that and more, so make sure you stay tuned. On Blues, your daily podcast on the St. Louis Blues. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Locked On Blues Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, and your number one source for daily blues content. I'm Josh Hyman. And I'm Thomas Welch. And we are back. We took a break last week. I came down with a bout of COVID, which wasn't fun. And then Tommy had his own uh, his own struggles with his apartment. Um, I don't know if you want to you want to share, Tommy. It's not my business. Yeah. So uh, so I just moved into like a new like condo, right? And so Mm. I was sleeping. Woke up woke up with some uh, some bug bites. Didn't really know what they were. Did some research, and I think. They were bed bugs, so I just Ooh. basically just ended up washing like my sheets, my pillows, my comforter, everything like in hot water like a million times and throwing it in the dryer. And I think we're all good now, so I haven't seen any new ones pop up, so we're good to go. But they had me in the first half. I'm not gonna yep. lie, and yeah, you were Tommy down. And I you were, were down for the yeah. count for a couple of days for sure. Really same same day, Tommy texts me, "Hey man, uh, I think I got some bed bugs. Might not be able to record today." Be like, "Hey, hate to one up you, but uh." <laughs> I got COVID, so yeah, yeah. It was a rough, rough close to the week last week, but a uh, decent time to have it, as you know, there wasn't a whole lot going on. But we did tune into the All Star Game and festivities this weekend. Going to be talking about all of that and more. But first, I want to thank anyone and everyone out there making Locked On Blues your first listen because we are free on all podcast platforms. And today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, Tommy. So before we get into the All Star game, uh, there was a few events that came before, including the skills competition. Uh, only including the skills competition, I guess. Um, but a lot of events in the skills competition. Uh, one of which was the fastest skater, where Jordan Cairo went like second or third. Um, posted a pretty quick time. Nobody could beat him. Up steps Connor McDavid. Only thing standing between Connor McDavid and his like fourth consecutive fastest skater award. You know he's won it every single time he's competed in the event. I think he came fourth this year. Yeah. So spoiler alert. Not only. Did Connor McDavid not surpass Jordan Cairo? He didn't surpass a couple of other guys, yeah. which left our own Jordan Cairo standing atop the podium to be the so, fastest skater this year. So in segment two, we'll be asking the question and answering the question, is Connor McDavid washed? So you don't want to go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> no, but That's honestly, in, in, in all reality, uh, I would not be surprised if a lot of those guys, Jordan Cairo included, uh, we're, we're down with some kind of bug. I don't know, maybe the Vegas flu. Uh, it sounded like <laughs> DeBoer <laughs> was down with the Vegas <laughs> flu. As he said, he was hungover in an interview. Yeah. Um, so take a lot of this stuff with a grain of salt, obviously. No. But the fact Jordan of the Kyra matter is the remains, fastest skater in the NHL. Here's the thing, though. I mean, we watched Jordan Kyra and Connor McDavid go head-to-head earlier this season when the Blues played the Oilers. And you can see similarities to these guys' games and the speed that they play with and the and the the quickness with which they break down each play is it's very similar, and I feel like they have the same motor, they have the same the desire to be the best and play on winning hockey teams. Uh, fortunately for the St. Louis Blues, they have Jordan Cairo. Uh, unfortunately for Connor McDavid, he's on the Edmonton Oilers. So I, I don't know if <laughs> Connor McDavid got the wrong end of the stick in that department, but I do think at the end of the day, Jordan Cairo. Whether you think he's the fastest player in the NHL or not, he won a race against Connor McDavid and other players in the NHL. And for that race, he was the fastest player in the NHL. It's and amazing. I do think like, he is easily like up there in conversation. How, and how very many times close to Connor McDavid at top speed? 
how many times have I mentioned that random article I found like four years ago where some scout compared Connor McDavid skating to Jordan Kairos, and I'm like, oh yeah, it's definitely true. And like I was kind of saying it with a bit of grain of salt, like okay, nobody can match Connor McDavid, but like I kept referencing it and like saying like, oh yeah, you know Jordan Kairos up there skating ability with Connor McDavid, and then the the skills competition rolled around and I kind of kept silent on it because I didn't want to make myself look like an idiot if Jordan Cairo got his his you know his pants blown off no. um but then sure enough Cairo comes out and wins the darn thing I mean he made a name for himself this weekend between you know putting up four points in the in the first game of the all-star game one point in the second one uh Victor Hedman the best defenseman in the NHL coming up on the podium and saying oh yeah you know that Jordan Cairo fellow he's a uh, He's a superstar in this league. I think those are the words he used. I think Victor Hedman called Jordan Cairo a superstar. So between that, the fastest skater probably would have won all-star MVP if the Central Division comes out on top in that game. The winner classic. The winner and classic. This, this dude has a knack for lighting it up on the big national stages. And I think that is actually what we're going to talk about in segment two is whether Jordan Cairo can be the face of this franchise moving forward and not like in the next like two or three years, obviously. But uh, when the changing of the guard comes, when that kind of rebuild comes, I don't think the Blues are going to have to do a full rebuild, but maybe just kind of like a retooling like they've done in years past because they've drafted so well. But they do have some guys that are getting older, and they do have some young guys that are playing some top-tier hockey right now. So there is going to be some point where there's a new core to this team. I think Jordan Cairo is going to be a part of that, and I would even – wager the possibility uh, that he could have a better career than Vladimir Tarasenko if all the chips fall uh, wow. in the right in the right places. Yeah, big, big, bold claim there, but that's what we're going to be talking about in the second segment, talking about Jordan Kairou's sort of rise to fame, comparing and contrasting it to Vladimir Tarasenko. So if you want to hear that, make sure you stay tuned. But first, want to tell you guys about our good friends over at Bilt Bar. Look, it's February. This is the time of the year that you've pretty much given up on all your New Year's resolutions. But not this year. I'm sticking to my resolution to eat right, thanks to Built Bar. It, it, excuse me, almost feels like it's not really a resolution because I actually enjoyed eating them. And have you heard about Built Bar Puffs? Well, if you haven't, you're missing out on one of Built Bar's best tasting bars. Puffs are the first ever protein infused marshmallow. That's right, marshmallow. They're fluffy, marshmallowy. They're not just a protein bar; they're a treat, and they're covered in 100% real chocolate. Puffs are a fan favorite with some incredible flavors. Yummy cinnamony churro, coconut marshmallow, banana cream pie. So delicious. They're going to be your new favorite. And like I said, all Built Bars are covered in 100% chocolate. So go to Built.com, scroll down to the macros chart, and you'll be blown away. High protein, low calorie, high fiber, low carb. Even with that chocolate covering, most Built Bars contain 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 grams of net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. Compare that to a candy bar, which usually has around 240 calories, 30 grams of sugar, and dozens of net carbs. Looking at the classic Built Bar flavors, you're getting mint brownie, coconut, and coconut almond. And new for this month, you got the white chocolate cookies and cream. They're all delicious, and new flavors are coming out all the time. If they think a flavor might be good, they'll make it, and it'll be delicious, and it'll be good for you. At Built Bar, they're all about the taste. They make it delicious first, and then they make it, figure out how to make it healthy. I don't know how, but they pull it off literally every time. So go to Built.com, use promo code LOCK15, and you'll get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at Built.com, and we'll be right back. All right, Tommy, I'm going to paint a little picture for you. So okay. it's about it's about 10 or so years ago-ish. Uh, the St. Louis Blues are taking the ice for their opening game of the season, I believe, against the Detroit Red Wings. Um, and a Russian phenom recently traveled overseas, played in the KHL for a few seasons by the name of Vladimir Tarasenko, is suiting up for the St. Louis Blues. Fans are excited. He was picked in the first round just a few years prior alongside Jaden Schwartz in the same draft, a few picks apart. Tarasenko had spent a lot of time in Russia. Fans weren't really sure whether or not he was even going to come over and play for the Blues ever, much less this season. But sure enough, he suits up, goes out, scores on his first shot. Comes out in a few shifts later, gets the puck again, Scores on his second shot. And from then on, for the past 10 or so years, from that moment forward, Vladimir Tarasenko slowly rose to become the face of the St. Louis Blues. And until then, it's kind of been unquestioned. You know, he kind of faded out a little bit, but they didn't really have a face. They kind of just played as more of a team game. And now, all of a sudden, in the year 2022, like I said, just about 10 years later, Jordan Cairo 
a guy who was traded for Brian Elliott just a couple years ago, picked in the second round. I was like, oh, he's fast, but eh, who knows? Maybe he'll turn into something. Sure enough, Jordan Cairo is getting praises of the best defense from the NHL, Victor Hedman, representing the St. Louis Blues as their only all-star this season. Uh, up there, was leading the team in points at one point. I'm not sure where he's he still is. Right now. I think he still Leads the is, team yeah. in points and goals, I believe. Doing everything for this St. Louis Blues team and potentially establishing himself as the next face of the St. Louis Blues. Tommy, do you think you think that's in line? You think before we know it, Jordan Cairo will be in all the billboards, all the posters, all the promos? I do, dude. I think when it... And not even just... I don't know. From the outside looking in, like as a Blues fan, I think we knew, like, from the way that he started off this season, and he's he had a hot start last season too. So, to be fair, he kind of tapered off uh, last season. But with this season, with how consistent he had been um, in terms of point production, I think he's still up there in terms of point per game. Uh, the Blues haven't had a hundred point player in like ten years. I think the last one was Demetra, if I'm not mistaken. I think. Kairu has an opportunity to do that at least once in his career and make history in that regard. Um, dude, he's got he's got like the baby face appeal. He's just a great dude. He's already got established chemistry with Robert Thomas and their friendship uh, is being blasted everywhere and everyone takes notice of that. So not only that friendship, not only having that brotherhood right off the bat, but those are the two guys I think that will eventually be the face of this franchise and that next core and that changing of the guard. So for to have them be so close and the way that they came up in their development and always helping each other and giving each other tips, you could hear it on Robert Thomas's mic'd up. I was uh, just going to ask They were you checking about in on each other. Yeah. So I think that bodes well for the future of this team going forward. And uh, if they, if they retool, like I'm expecting them to, we're going to see a version of the St. Louis blues that we haven't seen in a long time. And I think we talked about it on this pod, but a speed and skill based one that I don't think we've really seen since the days of like hole and oats where guys were just slinging the puck around the net and scoring an absurd amount of points per season. And I think that's part of what maybe not what hindered Vladimir Tarasenko, but he was never really put in a position to maximize his offensive capability because the blues were always so defense oriented in my opinion so they were never really an offensive juggernaut but especially with Hitchcock it was get pucks deep grind it out be hard on the forecheck and play lockdown defense and so for Vladimir Tarasenko to still put up the numbers that he did uh it's extremely impressive uh the shoulder surgery obviously in there could cause some problems as well but if Jordan Cairo stays healthy if the Blues kind of take after the mold of the Toronto Maple Leafs and become an offensive juggernaut because it seems like the defense is kind of struggling. So this offense has to pick it up uh, to really carry this team and then rely on their goaltending. I think there's an opportunity for that to happen. It just It's just a matter of whether or not Doug Armstrong wants to go down that road. And I think if he does, that would obviously benefit Robert Thomas. That would benefit Jordan Cairo. That would probably benefit Buchnevich, who's a very skilled player. Braden Shen is a guy that can kind of play both. Jake Neighbors is a guy that can kind of play both. But uh, if you're too token players on your team are Robert Thompson, Jordan Kyrie. I almost feel like you have to uh, sculpt your team around them to provide them success. So if I had to estimate right now, that's what I would expect the Blues to do. And that's why I think Jordan Kyrie could absolutely be the face of that movement. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's got, you know, the personality as well, which is a big part of it. Um, you know, we've kind of seen it lately where the NHL is kind of allowing a little bit more freedom for some of their their star players to have a bit of a personality. You know, a guy like Zegris going out in the skills competition, pulling out the – which I th- we got to talk about. Maybe, maybe, third segment to, kind of, maybe third segment will kind of just be like a, a mishmash of all the all-star events. But a guy like Zegris coming out in the Not Your Average Joe's dodgeball reference gear, uh, blind – oh, my, we'll get into it. We'll get into it. But, like, it really does feel like the NHL is changing up their approach to – uh, individual uh, promotion. You know, they they used to kind of shy away from individuals getting the spotlight because hockey is a team game and how good can your star player be if they're only on the ice 20 out of 60 minutes, blah, 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 blah. Um, and I think this season, specifically this All-Star game, has shown that you don't need to shy away from that. If you've got guys that are just bringing in uh, viewership solely because of their personality, whether it be on social media, in interviews, or 
pulling things like the Michigan, like Zegers has, if you get guys that people are just intrigued in as a person beyond just a hockey player, it's good for the game. And, and Jordan Cairo did a good job of that. I mean, Robert Thomas had his mic up. It is unfortunate that it had to be in literally the worst game maybe ever in the history. And of the personally, he got a tooth knocked out and of his mouth. So just a out. lot going wrong there. But even then, like before I realized, before I remembered it was the Flames game, I'm like, man, Thomas has got a whole lot of energy, got a lot of, you know, a lot of excitement. And I remember what game it was. You like, can dang, tell. I had that much energy and they were that- getting blown out. Yeah, my takeaway from that video was you can absolutely tell why uh, Craig Bruby felt comfortable enough to give him the A uh, for that one game because yeah. he's just talking to everybody. Yeah. He's great friends with everybody, giving them little tips and like, hey, hey, keep doing that. We're going to score that all the time. And like just kind of seeing where guys are at, asking questions, all those things. So I I, I would I, – if and when Robert Thomas takes over as the captain of the St. Louis Blues, I am 100% down with that. Ooh, wow. Big words there. Um. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I think we're definitely witnessing a changing of the guard, and we've been kind of saying it internally on this podcast for a while now that Jordan Cairo, Robert Thomas were going to be something special, even back when they were in the, um, you know, in juniors, and we weren't doing a podcast, we were just writing for Respect the Note together. I remember, you know, sending each other tweets and stuff like that, like, oh man, I'm so excited when this guy um, makes the league. I remember where I was sitting when the Blues traded Brian Elliott. I'm like, oh my God, they traded him for a draft pick? What the heck? They could have got, they could have done better. Um, I saw I picked Jordan Cairo. I looked I'm like, oh, okay, speed skill guy. That's pretty cool. Um, let me let me add him to to my uh my uh bookmarks. I check out every once in a while. I would check his hockey reference. That was the year that he went off and put up like 130 points in the OHL. Uh, and ever since then, I'm like, okay. Still that was be, when uh, we had the. It was like the goalie controversy with Jake Allen and Brian Elliott too, yep. right? Yeah. And the, so the their solution was. That. So their solution was trade Brian Elliott. Double down on Jake Elliott or Jake Elliott. Double down on Jake Allen and get a get a draft pick for the goaltender that's not the starter but is hot. And that draft pick turned into Jordan Cairo. So maybe follow that same trend with Vili Huso. Damn, we are just going. <laughs> through, we're going through so many different. As you can tell, today. it's been it's been it's a while crazy, since though. we've it's recorded. A lot of stuff Our to brains think about. are. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's 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 crazy to see like this kind of manifest itself. I feel like we've been witnessing the same style of blues hockey for forever and as much as it's worked as much as it's been fun there was definitely a moment like last season where we were like oh boy are the blues gonna get left in the dust are they just gonna kind of double down on their physical pucks and deep mentality you know craig ruby that's his style he's not gonna back away from what won him a cup is he and then sure enough he's like all right it's not working let's go to skill and speed let's let's give jordan Cairo and robert thomas the reins a little bit more and now jordan Cairo leads the team in scoring makes an all-star game robert thomas is you know 10 goals away from being a, a recognized freak in terms of point production, just because he has a ton of assists and not a lot of goals. No one's really talking about it, but if he had a couple more goals in there, who knows? Uh, Buchnevich, of course, it's an exciting time to be a blues fan for sure. You got, you got guys that, uh, you know, that are, that are showing up on the score sheet night in, night out that, you know, I mean, I don't know, I guess pre COVID would be a good way to look at it. Pre COVID you'd be like, who, um, you know, Kairu Thomas, they were they're like third, fourth line AHL guys ish just a couple years ago. So it, it is a very different look of a blues team this year. But the fact that they're this adaptable is exciting. Um, third segment, we're gonna be kind of trying to combine all of these thoughts together, talk a little bit about some of the other various things we liked from All Star Weekend, including Trevor Zegers and that beautiful breakaway challenge goal that he somehow didn't win for. So we'll be talking about all that. And more, but first, if you guys think Jordan Cairo might hit that hundred point plateau, or if you have any other hot takes for the rest of the season, well, Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. As football continues its march through the playoffs, right to the big game in a couple of weeks, BetOnline.net remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just football; Bet Online has up to the minute coverage on pro and college hoops, NHL, boxing, UFC, along with live real time updates of current games don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2022 season bet online where the game starts and we'll be right back (coughs) all right tommy so all-star game this weekend lots of lots of exciting things you know pete DeBoer and and johnny gaudreau both being the most hungover they've ever been in their life i don't know if you saw johnny skating up to the the blue line after they called his name. I didn't name, see Johnny. No, no, it, it looks stumbling. like it looked like they they called his name. He's like, ah, oh, God, can you lower that lower <laughs> that PA a little bit? These lights are real bright. 
right. I think Dylan uh, Larkin was wearing sunglasses too. Oh yeah, you could you state. could tell that uh, <laughs> the the boys took advantage of uh, their their location for the the All Star Game festivities and all that. But look, I think it goes that was into... part of the reason it was so cool though too, because we see uh, I think it was it was Kairu, Tom Wilson, uh, Zegris, I think somebody else. Uh, they were all partying with Loud Luxury. Uh, yep. in the club did you see that that was yep. an awesome video and it's just like yep. i don't know i think part of being a superstar in any kind of major sports league uh is not only what you do on the ice but what you do off the ice as well and i think uh the nhl's coverage of that in years past has been definitely lacking but for espn to kind of uh promote that and tnt has done a good job of promoting that as well mm-hmm. um and so, yeah, I think that's great for the league. Obviously, I, I would be fine with, I think, I don't know if we had that conversation, uh, but I would be fine with the All-Star game being in Vegas every year. Yeah. Uh, of kind of being like a reward for the players. It's like, hey, you got to make it in. Um, I am not fine with one player from every team uh, going to the All-Star game because it, it, that should be something that uh, gives you accolades on your Hall of Fame resume, not like, a, oh, yeah, he went to the All-Star game, but he kind of had to because he was right. on a terrible right. Montreal Canadiens team or something like that. <laughs> I hate it. Um, going to be the, the butt of every joke. I know. I feel bad, but like that was just the first one that came to mind. But uh, that true, being though. said, all the events, most of the events were cool. The Blackjack one was, I feel like would have been cooler if they had better commentary, I think. Yeah. It, just didn't feel, it felt like it was kind of lacking. Maybe it's because they recorded it the night before too. The Fountain one was just weird from all aspects. Although it felt kind of like top golf. So if they like, Feel like if they filmed it, put like, them up on like a two hundred foot platform. Yeah, or like even just like filmed it from behind them instead of like from behind the target and just like watching the puck. Like, oh yeah, I feel true. like that would have been like a cool. add like a, a like a ball angle. like a the, the ball tracker and stuff. Yeah, yeah. like that would have been a better job. But um, the breakaway challenge was absolutely nuts. I love yeah, Jack dude, Hughes. I love Jack Hughes bringing to, out the little kid and reminded doing Reminded me toss. of like the 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 OV uh, breakaway challenge from years yeah. ago. Which uh, Kirill Kaprasov even referenced, right? He took yeah. off his took off his jersey, revealed the OV jersey. Same like, uh, same uh, cadence, same uh, what's I can't think of it. Um, same nod. Same, yeah, 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 whatever. What, I, what it'll come to me like tomorrow. Yeah. I'll tweet. I'll tweet it out. I'm gonna tweet out one word in all caps, <laughs> and those of you who listen to this episode you go. Will know what the reference. Yeah, you'll is. know. Um, but yeah, his just like the way he he referenced that. It was great. It, it really felt like they kind of let the 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 leash off these guys in terms of mm-hmm. like hey like yeah you're representing the nhl yeah you're representing your organization you know the nhl classy blah blah, blah. But, but but have fun with it. you know kind yeah. of like for the first for the first time there was a little bit of extra but but just you know have some fun mm-hmm. we hadn't really got that in years past um it definitely had been dull the last few years like the breakaway challenge i, I haven't you know remembered it being cool since like i said the ov years yeah. of doing his stuff um and you got Zegris coming out with the not your average Joe's jump jumpsuit and the blindfold and the whatever the heck move he pulled off. With Zorro, the, baby. Yeah, unbelievable. It didn't win. Whatever. Okay, um, so yeah, here's my takeaway on that. The okay. Jack Hughes one was cool and like the sentimental effect of bringing a little kid out and then they both do the stick nah. to talk, the stick toss together. It's cute, right? But here's the, here's the thing. If you're going to be in the breakaway challenge, and everyone, every NHL player that's listening right now, I know there's a ton of you, <laughs> everyone in the league. <laughs> if you're going to be in the breakaway challenge, we need creativity and we need a difficult shot. So, Petrangelo, if you're going to have the marching band out there and all that stuff, one, you can't go down and just miss the net. Two, I need you to go down and do like between the legs or like a Datsuk flip or like anything that's remotely like difficult to be like, hey, at least, you know, we tried and like the goalie can like flop and like get out of the way or whatever. If you get it in the net, that's all I'm going to care about is that it was a difficult shot. Yeah. Right? That's why I think Zegris wins because he not only had the star talent and the creativity and the performance of the dodgeballs and the average Joe's Jersey and the blindfold, but his shot was just insane. I mean, that's like Instagram worthy stuff that like guys who don't even play hockey just sit If he had practice, done that like, without a blindfold, that would have been that trendy. Would have been impressive. Yeah. Which there's some discrepancy, I think, of whether or not he could see out of that. So I don't I really don't think it matters whether or not that blindfold worked. That was one of the coolest shots I've ever seen. And he didn't win. But the reason he didn't win was because of John Hamm rooting uh for the hometown boy 
and Alex Petrangelo, which I, I, there's definitely should have been an event that Vegas like won just in general. I don't think the breakaway challenge, having a D man in there was the one to do it. Maybe March or so doing the, the accuracy challenge would have made more sense for them to just be like, Hey, uh, he's going to win this one. So just don't worry about it, you know, but also at the same time, they had like betting props for all this stuff. So I don't think you can really throw it for anyone when you have people betting on the games that are sitting there like, oh, are you, I'm out 10 grand or whatever, because I didn't bet on the fact that Alex Petrangelo would beat out Zegris, Hughes, Debrink, and all these other guys in a breakaway shootout challenge. Like, I don't know. That just seems like, yeah. Um, a little bit problematic to me from the league, but I think that's an easy fix. But like you said, the basis and the bare bones of it was <laughs> absolutely electric. And I think the way that they did it yeah. is uh, very entertaining I mean, for the <clears throat> league and especially for little kids, which I think is, right. uh, is probably the game, their own. The game. Yeah, exactly. And like, yeah, I, I feel like, you know, it definitely wasn't perfect this year. They definitely, but they took a big leap, you know, with the, right. bringing back the, the style of the breakaway competition, the outdoor events, like, the NHL is nothing, or at least in the past, the NHL loves nothing more than to just remain consistent and remain consistently boring. Because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And then this year, the All-Star Game, plus the TNT coverage, the ESPN coverage, they're, they're taking a step out of their comfort zone. And for them to do that, it, it, it only means that it's going to grow and you know the craft, the product will be perfected. So next year's All-Star Game is going to be even cooler. Maybe it won't be in Vegas, but they know what worked. They know what people liked. They liked that atmosphere. They liked the the stuff outside of hockey. I would love to see them do something in, in like Minnesota areas. So I don't know, just something where they can bring into the, the, the city and the environment into it as well. I, I, I don't know. I am so excited to see what the NHL can do moving forward. You know, the All-Star game was, along with like the Winter Classic, was the first times that ESPN and TNT have had the opportunity to kind of put their put their product on a national stage. Um, and I saw more hockey highlights just like scrolling through Twitter and Instagram, you know, th- through like, uh, you know, Barstool and various like just h- house of highlights, places that don't mm-hmm. normally cover hockey a ton were posting the Zegras shot. And and we're posting about like Jordan Cairo dethroning Connor McDavid, like areas that I don't typically see a whole lot of hockey coverage. It was flooding my timeline. And that's awesome. That's the goal. And it worked. Yeah, it is Um, awesome. And I I think another thing that I just thought about uh, that could be another added layer to this breakaway challenge is celebrations, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, we could go, because if you're like, for me and like doing like the selling meter and all that stuff on Twitter, I love seeing guys like throw the stick over the board and like Kuznetsov doing the bird and like just way over the top like celebrations. But I understand that in the league, there's a bunch of old guys and like there's a bunch of old fans too uh, and a bunch of old coaches and media guys and panelists and all that stuff that would absolutely have your head on a platter uh, if you do some over the top stuff in a game. So maybe this is a safe space. In the breakout, in the oh, in the sorry. breakaway challenge, where you can just go full tilt. Like I've seen guys like celebrate a shootout goal by moonwalking on the ice. Never seen an NHL player do it, but in the in the in the breakaway challenge, you could do it wearing one glove on your hand and a full Michael Jackson like get up. You know, so I I think there's a ton of opportunities here for creativity, for bringing in new fans, for bringing in young fans, like you said, uh, and I think that is the overall goal for the NHL. So hopefully they expand on this next year moving forward uh, and we get a nasty one in Florida which would be sick oh, too right. because I feel like they that's right. don't really do care that. about hockey a lot down there but they just had a three-peat. Hey, but you you, and say, the you could, you could have nasty. said that about you could have said that about Vegas but then look what they did with the I don't know. It's hard to say that about Vegas. Their fans are nuts. Oh, they are, but uh, yeah, I guess Florida is <laughs> they might not they might not okay. Yeah. Okay, in comparison, Florida and I can't right, right, hockey right. as much. But like I was saying, in terms of like the outdoor festivities and all that, palm trees, uh, you know, South Beach, the, the South Beach uh, beach volleyball skills competition. Boom! You got guys in like sunglasses and and they're they're wearing like their shorts. But hopefully, it is the. The first of, of many years of exciting uh, hockey content to come. Yeah, I hope so too. And I think 
even if you're in Florida, right? And you're like, oh, well, there's no ice around us and there's never going to be because it never snows here. You could play roller year mm-hmm. round. And I mean, it's, it's not the same thing, but you still get that kind of feel of like playing hockey and like you can relate to the guys that you're like watching on TV. You know, I think, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of places in Florida that you can skateboard. So I'd assume at, at some mm-hmm. point, even if, even if they don't have roller um, hockey stuff right now, they can and they should because – their teams are nasty. I mean, the Lightning and the Panthers are like two of the best teams in the league, probably top five, both of them. Yep. So if you're yeah. not growing the game in Florida, and it's just great for the league too, having Florida like a vacation spot and like obviously guys around the league. I'm sure there were a bunch in this All Star weekend that went to Miami as a vacation. So uh, I think, yeah, just at the end of the day, you get those big cities and those big like vacation spots around the USA to become hockey hotbeds along with the one that's already uh, scalding hot in the Midwest, the heartland of hockey. I think mm-hmm. you're going to be, you're going to be in pretty good shape. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, good stepping stones in place for the future of the NHL in terms of national coverage and all that. And we are very excited to be back covering this game that we love and this team that we love so much. Like I said, took a couple of days off. We appreciate you guys for bearing with us, but we are back. Should be back to daily episodes between now and the rest of the month. The blues are playing hockey again on Wednesday? Thursday Wednesday? against the Thursday Devils. against the devils. So Jack Hughes, uh, maybe I know he's on COVID protocol, so maybe not Jack Hughes. Yeah, I don't think he will, <laughs> um, but still blues hockey, Jordan Cairo, all those guys. We'll be here. Make sure you hit that follow or subscribe button on whatever podcast platform you're listening to us on. That way you never miss a new episode. Hit that subscribe button on our YouTube channel at Locked On Blues. Hit that notification bell. That way you'll be notified whenever a new episode goes live. They always, pretty much always go up before the uh, audio episodes. So if we're having like technical difficulties or whatever, if, if you're not seeing the, the episode on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, whatever, it'll most likely be on YouTube first. Uh, pretty much every time we do an episode, it ends up on YouTube before. So make sure you're checking us out there. Make sure you're following us on all of our various social medias at Lockdown Blues on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and Facebook. Follow me on Twitter at Josh Hyman NHL. Follow Tommy on Twitter at TWelcher15. Thanks so much for listening. And as always, let's go Blues. <laughs> <laughs>